Hey guys, how you doing? This is JP Sari Kolia coming to you once again uh, with another episode of Age of Heroes, my podcast. Uh, starting a new week. Uh, this week, um, it's an important week for me. It's the last week for me uh, at my act, at my uh, my job. Um, uh, of course, like I mentioned before, I gave my two weeks notice where I'm in the last stretch. So I'm finalizing a lot of things. I'll be busy, uh, very busy throughout the week. Uh, I have my podcast, of course. Not so sure if I'm going to have a video, uh, a book review at the end of this week. I, I've been battling. I'm still battling with bronchitis, uh, which makes it really hard even to make a video, even to make this podcast. You know, I have to re-record the podcast time and time again because I, I start coughing really bad. Um, so sorry if I cough throughout this video. Uh, but, um, you know, I've, next week uh, when I become unemployed but also self-employed, uh, I will do, uh, the, you're going to see a lot of changes in this channel, a lot of changes in the format, a lot of new content, new things. Uh, it's going to be more open and it's going to be uh, more visual. They're going to do more stuff here. So stay tuned. Um, thank you for your support. Uh, this weekend, uh, I, I had a poll on, on here on YouTube where I asked the question of what people were interested on really uh, to do to see more in this channel throughout 2019. A lot of people, the, the biggest one, which most people voted was comics, you know, which is the big thing. I think the biggest part of this channel. And the second one, collectibles. Uh, I don't think there were votes for anything else, uh, which really I, I'm listening. Uh, I'm listening to what you're saying. It is the goal. That's always been the goal, comics and also collectibles. But also, you know, there's other areas which I want to explore. And you'll see that. Uh, but don't make no mistake. I'm not here, um, you know, changing the outcome of what the goal has always been. And uh, at the end of the day, it's all about entertainment. Uh, my channel is about that, you know, and. Uh, one of those, you know, one of those things that are part of entertainment is gaming and gaming is a big part. So in this podcast today, uh, I want to talk about uh, the big news, some of the big news that happened last week uh, in regards to GameStop, uh, the big juggernaut uh, uh, retailer uh, here in the U.S. Um, uh, GameStop, um, the, you know, as we know, uh, has been through ups and downs financially, uh, have lost a lot of money, uh, has been in trouble uh, it's been for sale for quite a while, but there was a report by the the Wall Street Journal where actually um, they 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 saying that right now there are two companies bidding for GameStop, and it's very likely that we will have a public announcement by the middle of next month. Uh, and it's citing, uh, of course, that actually there are two companies, two private uh, uh, investors, uh, equity companies are trying to purchase GameStop. The first one is Sycamore Partners, which is a company that uh, invests primarily on retailers and the retailing market. And you also have another company named Apollo Global Management, which I did some digging. It's a company that primarily uh, it does a lot of investment on high that does a lot of high risk investment. Uh, primarily they buy companies that are failing, though have failed, pro companies that have gone on bankruptcy. And pretty much what they do, they restructure everything, then they flip it again, uh, they can sell it for more. Uh, so right now these are the two companies that are pretty much uh, bidding, uh, to purchase, uh, games. So who will do it? Will it go through? We don't know yet. We don't know the ins and outs of how much people are really, how much uh you know they're going to or the trying to purchase or how much they want to sell it uh we know that uh, you know GameStop has been uh, struggling for quite a while uh last year uh GameStop CEO Paul Ryan so he was a longtime CEO of the company died in March uh, uh he was very young he was only 53 years old uh the company has gone through a, uh, you know a process of pretty much readjustment uh it was replaced by Michael Muller uh, who only lasted like around three months and he left for personal reasons. Uh, many of them uh, has been known is because, you know, pretty much GameStop has been suffering financially, has been losing money left and right. And uh, now Shane Kim, uh, who is the former boss of Xbox during the Xbox 360 era, uh, is now the current CEO of GameStop. So uh, GameStop has been struggling. Now, uh, to put this into uh, under, to understand what's going on right now with GameStop, probably you have seen multiple videos, you have read a lot about what GameStop is going through, how they've been losing money in this new competitive market. 
Uh, it was a time with pretty much GameStop was the place to go to purchase games. There was a time where GameStop pretty much controlled the market and it was a place where people, um, and they, they have that control. They determine exactly what sell or not because there was no other. This has never been other company as big as GameStop or at the same <clears throat> level of GameStop. You know, you have retailers like Walmart, you have retailers like Target, you have retailers like Best Buy. But they all have a, a, you know, they they cater not the way GameStop did. GameStop was the type of place that have not only dealings with these big corporations, with the big distributors, uh, the publishers, and also with the uh, developers. You know, you know, you that was the place you pre-order games. That was the time where I pre-ordered any everything that came out through GameStop because of the DLC, because of the uh, the incentives to do that. Um, they were the big company. They were the big dogs. But of course, as we know, there was a lot of resentment in regards to the way they doing it, uh, because uh, they were in the used market. Technically, they were buying and selling, buying and selling, and they were making killing profit. The profit that companies like uh, like Sony or Microsoft or all these companies they felt uh, disgruntled because they were not making any money. You're not making any commission or something like that. Something that they have changed, you know, is particularly now that we have switched from uh, physical to digital. And, um, you know, the, the, the rise of the digital market where actually companies can continue and developers and publishers can keep selling and selling the same product time and time and time again. And uh, they're making money. Uh, particularly companies like uh, like uh, you see Nintendo, you know, uh, technically you buy a game uh, digitally. You only buy it for that specific console. You have to buy the game multiple times uh, if you have different consoles. You know, they have used this unless you have to transfer the data, which uh, some people don't do. So it just, <coughs> as we know, GameStop, uh, it was a time with GameStop was pretty much, uh, it was controlling the market in many, many ways. My experience with GameStop, and I'm going back a few uh, years ago. I started um, going to GameStop probably, it's been probably like 15 years ago or more. Uh, my first time that I, I went to GameStop probably was more than that. Um, I remember that good old times with GameStop was a place where you could go and have conversations with the manager and the people that work there. Because they were gamers. Uh, we talk about geek culture. It was a time where GameStop was all about games. It was games. It was a culture of games where you can purchase used games, old games from all different. Uh, I remember you could purchase games for different consoles, not necessarily the newer consoles. And it was a place where you go and hang out and you talk about games uh, and anything that has to do with games. Uh, it was uh, it was the golden days of, of GameStop. Of course, over time, GameStop started changing the culture. I remember uh, I'm still friends with the manager. My the first the first store that I ever went, I'm, we were friends on Facebook. You know, the people that work there, we still friends on Facebook after all these years. You know, uh, you know, I've seen him grow. I've seen their children grow. It's just, it was a time. And we moved from that city. We moved to another city. And in this city also, I remember the manager there. We became good friends. And, uh, you know, and the people that worked there, I still remember good friends. And, you know, good memories. You know, what time would I put so much money in GameStop? Even before I really got into uh, heavily into statue collecting, uh, I was a lot of doing a lot of gaming and a lot of stuff, pre-ordering games and getting a lot of stuff. Um, but the, the, the things start changing. The, the, the market started changing. Uh, to the place where you felt that, um, what was the plus even to pre-ordering games? I remember that was a time where you pre-order games because you get incentives that nobody else had just to have a game and to play the games. But then, uh, of course, these incentives were watered down because you were getting junk or you were getting stuff that actually will go out for sale, a special DLC that will go out for sale down the road. And uh, the, the prices drop. And, of course, the companies are producing. The, the, we ha they have this new thing about the, the year, uh, you know, game of the year editions or the complete editions where actually it was killing the DLC. It was killing, you know, you were purchasing a vanilla game. Uh, and of course, down the road, some better game will have everything you ever wanted in just one single game for less the price. So all of that really, um, uh, you know, I got disappointed, you know, and then I started, you know, getting into more statue collecting. So I kind of walk away from gaming for some time. I was still gaming, but not as heavily as I was. And, uh, of course, things have changed in GameStop. <clears throat> I'm talking about many years ago when it was different. You know, and nowadays you can go and there's so many horror stories you have heard online and people that have worked there. You can watch the videos here on YouTube, people that have worked there. 
the culture changed. And I remember when the culture was changing, uh, when GameStop was going in a new route, when they stopped trading uh, old games and started just going into the route of just getting the newer stuff, when they were not paying you as they used to pay you for your trades. Uh, and I remember that was that. I never was a trader. I've never been a big trader because, you know, I, I'm a collector. I collect a lot of things, and that includes games. Um, but I do, did notice that there was a, a situation where they were changing. They were not buying certain things anymore, and they were not doing this anymore. And uh, they, you were getting less and less. And uh, not just that, the culture, they were pushing used games time and time again. They were pushing ga- used games. They were they could tell you that they didn't have a, a or a, you know, in this case, a new copy when they actually did. But they were just trying to sell you that. And, of course, uh, many of the people that I they worked there that were good friends back in the day, they were telling me stories about how things were changing in their company to the point that they were working less and less and less hours and they were demanding more from them to the point that many of them, they just left because it was not profitable to be in this company. And of course, you see a new growth in these companies where they were bringing all these uh, people that they have a more executive type of mindset, a more business mindset. They were no longer gamers. Uh, I remember back in those days, you could talk to one of those kids uh, in the counter. They knew what they were talking about. They talk about games. But now you can ask any people in the front counter about some games. They don't know games. You know, they barely know exactly what they're doing there. And it's more business-like. So, you know, I was a member uh, with GameStop. I, I, you know, I, I gathered so many points. I still have so many points that I never really collected. Um, I always still get the emails. Uh, but, you know, I got tired of it. I just, I just felt that it was no longer my place. And uh, I just simply never I, – I didn't renew Uh, And it's been years now, um, probably six, seven years, which I just simply didn't renew um, my uh, my membership and I just let it go. And uh, I've been at a GameStop. There's multiple games where I live. A lot of games in this area. Uh, EB Games. And uh, I go and um, I just stop by and see what's going on. Uh, but it's no longer what it used to be. Nowadays, of course, they have this connection with uh, uh, Ding Geek, um, and you know they sell stuff. They sell all kind of stuff from toys, uh, memorabilia, you know, action figures, uh, you know, statues. Uh, they sell all kind of stuff. Not necessarily, you know, um, not necessarily anything that has to do with gaming anymore. So you know, it's no longer what it used to be. And uh, as we know, they've been struggling, you know, because the market has changed. The companies have gone into the digital route. Uh, they have always been unhappy and they were always unhappy with uh, GameStop and the dealings with GameStop. But there was no one else that could compete with them. Walmart was not at the same level. Target was never at the same level. Um, you know, Toys R Us when it was still existing, you know, was not ever at the same level. Of course, the rise of digital media, but the rise also of online shopping has really killed GameStop in many ways. And, you know, you can order stuff through Amazon. You can order stuff through eBay. It's a lot easier that way. So, you know, and people are dissatisfied because because, you know, you know, they you know, you can go there and you don't get anything or they just don't buy your old stuff anymore. And uh, the culture is has changed. In reality, GameStop has has tried to kind of, you know, stay in business by wearing so many different hats, but has forgotten the main hat or the main reason why they're in business in the first place, which was to cater to the gaming community. Um, this is the part uh, where I want to bring uh, as a conclusion to today's um, um, podcast. Um, if you want to have a business, you know, and that goes for everything, um, you have to maintain your goals. You have to maintain, uh, you have to maintain what you want to do while you do want to accomplish. Uh, you have to be truthful and you have to remember the culture of the people that actually put you in business. And, uh, as long as you maintain that, you can grow a company in a new direction and you can maintain that company and you can have a sustainable business model for the years to come. The company has evolved, uh, but in many ways, uh, GameStop has evolved, but has not evolved with the times, has not evolved with the times, you know, and uh, there is still a big community of gamers. There's still people that want games. It's still, there is a big, it's a strong market out there for retro gaming. And I think that in the moment with GameStop was trying to compete with digital media, it has been trying to compete and, you, and it's not going to win. The only route for GameStop to actually stay profitable in business is to maybe go the re- retro route, you know, trying to support the gamers uh, more than just trying to stay afloat, trying to compete with, in this case, Sony, with Microsoft, or even with Nintendo with the digital services. Um, 
there's a lot of things the company needs to do. Um, they need to shut down so many of those stores that they have. You know, they have too many stores, more than they can sustain. Uh, they need to shut it down. You know, you need to centralize what you do as a business. You need to stop, you know, uh, you know, throwing everything in the sense of um, selling all kind of stuff that has nothing to do with gaming. Um, just concentrate on gaming. And that's what you have done. You know, yes, if you want to do some other stuff, yes. But that shouldn't be the main goal. When you walk nowadays, when you walk into a GameStop, everything you see is just a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with gaming on the first on the front is everything that they trying to sell. And all the games are all in the back. You know, nobody really goes there. And uh, if you want to be a gamer, if you want to sell uh, games, then you need to do it. It's like you having a pizza joint and trying to sell hot dogs. You know, are you a pizza joint or you a hot dog place? You know, you have to stay the course. You have to be who you are. You have to remember who you are. And uh, you need to move and you need to sell and you need to do whatever you need to do in order to cater to the people that come to you in the first place for games. You know, I love to go. I remember back in those days, I will go to a new town. I love to stop at a new GameStop or EB Games because there was always a deal. You know, they don't have any deals. There's no excitement for me to go to GameStop or EB Games because they're all the same. They all cut like, you know, they, 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 you know, they cut on the same with the same scissors. They're all the same and there's nothing new about it. You know, they have this kind of like business like mental, mentality mindset. People are there are very unhappy working there. Nobody there is friendly anymore. Nobody really cares about the people that walked in. You know, you have that. If you change that culture, you go back to actually what made GameStop a, a, a force to reckon with, then believe me, you will be in business for a long time. But of course, you know, the world has changed and things have changed. Uh, and there's things that, of course, the company has to adapt. There's no such a thing as too big to fail. <coughs> and, uh, you know, companies have proven it. You know, Blockbuster was one of them. You know, close the doors. You saw, you know, you see what happened with, uh, you know, Toys R Us. You know, these companies, they cater a market for a time until pretty much they were out of gas. And I feel that GameStop still has the potential to be strong. But it depends a lot on their mindset and the culture and actually who is the one that purchased the company in the end and what these new investors bring to the table. Uh, what changes do they bring? I believe that there's still potential. Gaming is such a powerhouse. You know, it's the biggest entertainment uh, business in the world. Um, it just requires finesse. And uh, something that GameStop has lost and, you know, a lot of mismanagement, a lot of people that they were just managing and they pretty much run it to the ground. Hopefully with this, it changes uh, a lot. You know, I think the image of GameStop has been hurt for so long. But uh, I believe me, if GameStop changes the way they approach business, the way they do things, if they go back to what really made them strong, I, I will I have no problem in just, you know, signing again, you know, becoming a member again, continue buying from them. But at this point, I don't feel the need uh, because some other companies or some other um, ways, uh, there are many ways, better ways to get what I want and than just going to game stuff. So what do you think? What's your opinion of the matter? <coughs> I would like to hear it. Uh, please share your thoughts below. Uh, do you have any memories of GameStop? Any good memories or maybe also bad memories? I would like to hear it. What is your opinion in regards to that? Uh, what do you prefer? Do you prefer digital? Do you prefer physical? Um I would like to hear it. Share your thoughts below. So once again, thanks for watching this video. If you're watching this through YouTube, please, if you're doing it, like, comment, and subscribe. Very important. Uh, don't forget to hit the notification button so you're reminded of all of my videos. If you're listening to the podcast through the different apps, uh, uh, please also like, uh, please download it, uh, please share it with your friends or with your family. And uh, uh, if you want to support this channel again, uh, uh, please uh, consider doing so through my Patreon account. Uh, I'll be, uh, it'll be a blessing and uh, you know definitely will help me to keep bringing more content uh, on a daily basis, uh, a much better quality. So God bless you and have a great week. Bye-bye.